My name is Robin McComas and this is my husband James. Until we meet again, we're located at 306 North Main in Hutchinson, Kansas, uh, where we specialize in custom caskets, urns, and memorial products. So, how did you choose getting into this kind of profession? Well, we've both been in healthcare for a number of years, and uh, with all the changes that are coming about with healthcare, it's time for a change, time to do something different. And James got laid off from his job, so my dad passed away in December of 2010, and I had gotten a YouTube video through the email of the Till We Meet Again store in Wichita. And so we decided to go down there and see um, what they had, and we found the perfect urn for my dad. It was a motorcycle gas tank urn, and we had it custom painted just like his Harley, because he always said he loved two things in life, my mom and his Harley Davidson motorcycle. So that's how we got started this in the store. That is painted on here is just exactly like what was on his, the front of his Harley Davidson. So very, very, but that's how we got into it. Um, made the decision to start this kind of a business because it was such a good feeling to go in somewhere and see that death didn't have to be morbid and sad and we could celebrate my dad's life and the way he lived and and everything without it being so sad and it could be a more of a celebration than and that's what we what we try and practice here is it's a celebration of life it's not uh, just a morbid death type of experience and a lot of people when they come in they'll look at the windows they'll walk by the windows about three or four times before they come in because they're afraid to come in but the minute you come in, you find out we have music on. It's not the same type of feeling when you go to a funeral home. Uh, it's, it's very lively in here. We want to get to know the individual because we're all about personalization. It, it's about, extremely about making it personal. And to do that, we have to know the individual, whether it's somebody from Dodge City who was a sheriff for 40 years and can tell you stories about deputizing you know, seven U.S. presidents during his lifetime. I mean. We get amazing stories, and that allows us to really make true, customized products that are representative of an individual. So can um, we get a tour of the, some of the basic stuff you have in the store? Sure. We have a, a military line of caskets. This I like to call our dress caskets because this is more representative of the dress uniforms that they wore in the military. This is actually the Marine casket. Um, we have them in all of the armed services, but we also have a um, line of, as I like to call them, the BDU caskets, which are more the working man type um, military caskets, so, and they're all really cool looking. And Very heavy duty type of product on that BDU type line, a diamond plated steel. One person came in and said, this is an officer's casket, I'm a tank driver, and that was the type of casket he was wanting. Uh, it spells Army on the side, but details what it's all about with us. And so when we talk about customization, this is what we consider a standard customization. Uh, we have a standardized cap panel, so it, it, we can turn these in 24 hours and get them out to whoever needs them, wherever they need them. Um, we have the detail of the stars, and the most important thing on any soldier's casket is right on the end, we have the U.S. flag representation of, of who they are and what they died for, what they believed in. We got further details like on the top of the caskets where you can actually see the logo of the of their service. So then in this particular case we have the Eagle Globe and Anchor. Um, I have yet to find a Marine who comes in and doesn't say simplify with this, this is what casket I want. Um, it looks like something they would wear uh, we put a lot of pride and detail into what we do uh, with our caskets. So our caskets, almost every single one of them, this is optional, has a one-piece gasket or seal that goes around it. These are just standard things we put on our caskets. We don't charge extra for them. Um, so you can see that detail. But this can be further customized. A lot of people, especially enlisted, will put their rank. We put the, the uh, gunnery sergeant ranks on the ends of it. We had one gentleman who was in the Air Force, flew F-14s, and the more we got talking about it, he had a picture of it. So we actually modified this, made this shorter, put a picture of his F-14 flying uh, at the end here, and then on the cap, and nobody could see this until they closed the casket, 
but just like on the canopy of the plane, it had his call sign up there. And so when it closed, it was his F-14 and his call sign. And I'm actually starting to get a little teary-eyed right now because it is so cool to be able to, to do that. Uh, and that's what it's really all about. It's personalization. It's celebration of that life lived and how they want to uh, Our it. signature casket, or what we call graffiti casket, this is our most popular casket for the age group uh, between about 15 and 21. At that particular age in, in your life, you have so much going on. Um, and, and it's unfortunate, but it seems to be true that at that age, uh, a lot of times it's a closed casket because it was an auto accident. And it was something traumatic. You want to remember the individual the way that they were. And one way of doing that and giving closure to other people is a casket like this. Um, and it can be any type of casket. We do customized graphics. And on this particular one, it's just our logo but we've done school logos on the top, down at the end here. We've listed the sports and the activities that the individual was in. Uh, and then when all their friends came through, they gave them one more opportunity. Kind of like signing a cask, except it's one more way of saying goodbye. Uh, again, uh, I get choked up over it a lot because I hate to see any type of child pass away, um, but it does happen, but it's a great way of saying goodbye. So any type of, of customization or custom graphics can be done. Uh, our wrap caskets, anything can be done with wrap technology. Um, so we can do a full wrap or a partial wrap. Here we have our tulip wrap. We've done roses, any type of flower. Uh, custom interior. This is a prime example of a custom interior. You will never find this interior anywhere else because it's the only time we've used it. <laughs> uh, we've actually gone down to Hobby Lobby. We had one customer the other day. Uh, we did an American flag and we took a wood casket and we airbrushed it, clear coated it, and then we had to put a custom interior in it that they wanted. So we went down to Hobby Lobby, that they saw exactly what they wanted, we got it, and we did the modifications ourselves to uh, make that exactly the way that they wanted it to be. Uh, so anything can be done, anything you can imagine. We never say anything is out of the question. Um, there are limitations on any type of modification that you do to a casket. And the main one being that you have about five days uh, for a body to be in a funeral home and you have to do something with it by that time of burial. Um, so we're operating within that window. So if it's not something that you pre-planned with us, it can sometimes be difficult to do a full-blown customization. Uh, but there's always an option out there. And there's always something affordable. Um, this particular one's only about $2,000 for a partial wrap and custom interior. So you can see it, it's pretty affordable. Most of our costs are about one-third less of what you'll find for a custom casket, one-third less than what you'll find in a funeral home. And that's just because we've reduced a lot of our overhead. Uh, we, don't, we just don't have as much overhead. Uh, and we want to make it affordable. We want to make it something that people are going to use. When we get to things like our Kansas City Royals or our, our baseball, we're currently working on football. But we had a strike going on, so that one's not done yet. Uh, and uh, the KU, the Collegiate Series. Uh, these two are officially licensed caskets, and what that means is that we can't alter them any other way than they are right now. It doesn't mean that we couldn't make a different KU casket, but this is what the college or the Major League Baseball Association and their players unions have all agreed to, and so it is exactly the way it is. Um, but the cool thing about it are there are urns to complement that. Unfortunately, I don't have any in stock right now to show you, but there are urns that complement these, so whether you go cremation or you choose to go uh, through a traditional yeah. casket burial, um, there's an option for you. This particular casket is really unique though, and it's the only one that we have, and we are the only authorized distributor for this. It is a vaultless casket. We have vaultless caskets and vaultless urns. What does that mean? Well, an average vault, when you go to bury it, any casket, it has to be in a concrete vault or fiberglass vault of some type, poly, uh, polycarbonate vault. And that's going to help keep moisture out a little bit, and it's going to help prevent any type of sinkhole. And that's the purpose of a vault, is to prevent that sinkhole or collapse as any type of material deteriorates. This product has been, it, it is a, a resin material, and it's made of the same material as the vaults are. And it does not deteriorate. It has been tested by Georgetown University, and uh, we provide that information to the cemeteries. And so, um, this becomes an, a way to reduce the cost for people of, of having to buy a vault. Again, vaults cost between 750 all the way up to about 1500 to 3000 
it just depends on the type of ball that you get. Uh, so we try and reduce that cost. Uh, one of the things that we focus a lot on is education, and so I'm hoping that you're seeing that as and there's always a way to personalize things and keep it affordable. Uh, a lot of people will ask, I've already purchased a casket from a funeral home. What can I do? Well, there's the, always the option of being able to um, transition that and change your plan. You can do that. Uh, funeral homes a lot of times, and I'm not dogging a funeral mm -hmm. home, but they will say things like, well, you know, if you do that, it's going to change the price of it. And that is true. It can change the price of it. Um, and you pre-plan for something. And so you have to look at each contract by each funeral home differently because each one's written slightly differently uh, by different law firms. So we have to look at each one separately. But things that you can do, if you pre-purchased a casket, there is no rule saying that we can't go do customization to that casket. So there's an option. So we can do look at, again, doing some type of wrap on it. We can look at doing graphics, custom airbrushing. There's all these options still out there. Even if you pre-selected something else, we can still do some type of customization to it um, because it's your property. But custom cat panels is something that we specialize in. Also, this one is just a deer gone hunting thing. Um, custom interior, wood casket. Um, a lot of people look at this and they go, well, that is absolutely beautiful. I wish I had it in something that was more traditional. But we do traditional caskets too. Uh, everything that you see starts off as a traditional casket. We then take it a step further and customize it, personalize it to the individual. Uh, to do that, this one's a hunting thing, but our traditional caskets, you're generally going to save about 50% from what you'll find at a funeral home. So again, significant savings for the individual. Oh, a lot of people will ask the question, does a funeral home take it? Will they, will they let me use this? And the answer is absolutely, they have to. There was a law passed in 1996, it's called the Funeral Home Act, and it specifies that any person can bring any product in they want. And this means that you can bring in any urn that you choose, you can make your own urn, you could go to Walmart, buy a toolbox, and use that as an urn if you wanted to. So anything can be converted in and used in that environment, as long as it meets certain specifications. Uh, for example, you couldn't use a cardboard box uh, because you can't carry the body in a cardboard box. However, if it's designed to do so, then you're perfectly fine. So there are safety regulations that have to be met. Uh, right. So any type of custom cat panel, we did one not too long ago with an individual who had his keel, and him and his brother-in-law were in the picture. It was absolutely beautiful. Uh, probably my favorite cat panel of all time because it just blended so well with the, the hunting thing. Um, we do a full line of pet products. So we can do any type of pet product. And pet products, a lot of people think, oh, you know, pets. Well, pets are like family members. And again, we see a lot of people coming in, and they've had their pet for 15 years. I know I personally had a cat for, for 13 years. Uh, and uh, is very dear, near and dear to me. It used to hiss at my wife all the time because it thought it was married to me. But, um, you know, the idea behind it is that, well, pets are people too. And they're part of a family. And so anything we can do for a human, we can do for a pet also. So it's a full gamut of customization. Um, but it can be as little as you want or as much as you want. Um, we can do simple things from small lizard type that are as a 5 to $10 type item. Uh, we've done customizations of you know, three to seven hundred dollars on pet products because somebody wanted a custom box made with a specialty frame on the front of it and they wanted it lined with velvet. It's entirely up to you what we do and how we do it. Um, but we can do pet caskets. That's our Kansas casket. It has the wheat theme on it, combine on the top, and then we have quotes and um, photos of, of uh, the life of an individual. Again, uh, so we can take anything. The nice thing about photos is if you really look closely at these photos that we that we use, you, know, you won't see a lot of pix pixeling in them, even on the older ones that are like 1940s and before. And the reason for that is we have graphic designers who help with that design, and we clean up those photos as we enlarge them so the pictures are very clear um, and, and very usable. Songs are neat in the sense that whatever you do with a casket, you can do with an urn. But you can do 300, 300 times more things with an urn than you can a casket. Caskets are limited to the shape. You have four sides on a casket. That's what you have to work, work with and you have a top. 
Uh, with an urn, anything, like I said, can be turned into an urn. It's all about sealing it. It's all about, you know, making it professional looking and representative of that individual life. So whether, you, oh, I don't have my fishing pole. It's usually right there. <laughs> uh, whether it's a firefighter theme, uh, whether it's a wood inlay type, uh, anything's possible when it comes to an urn. We've done motorcycles, we've uh, motorcycle urns, custom airbrushings. We've taken actual Harley Davidson motorcycles, uh, urns, flushed them, sealed them, and airbrushed them so that that's exactly what they got. It was a true Harley urn. Um, price ranges range on anything. The more customized you want of something, the more expensive something can, is going to run you. That's just kind of. A lot of people think that with cremation jewelry or memorial jewelry that you are going to only use it for the ashes. And the reality is a lot of people use it for um, hair, uh, other memorial things that they'd like to put into it. And granted, it has to be a small amount of whatever we're using. Uh, one of the really cool things that we have, though, is the jewelry that actually takes ashes. And during the, the design process, the ashes are swirled into it. And so it's very unique. It's one of a kind. There's never any, any two that are identical. Uh, it's a great heirloom and extremely affordable. Uh, and there's lots of other designs that can do paperweights and things like that too. So again, the, the world's open on that type of stuff. Uh, and probably the last, the last thing on the jewelry that I'd mentioned are like the thummies and the buddies uh, for pets and humans. But the really cool thing about it is on a thummies, we take a print of the finger, uh, just a fingerprint, and we turn it into a pendant. Uh, we had a lady come in not too long ago who lost her son in Iraq, and they had the military burial, and she saw this, and she goes, I really wish that I could, could get something like that, but, you know, we've already buried him and everything. And I said, well, we can help you with that. All we got to do is request her D the DD-214, because with every soldier, you get a fingerprint. And uh, so we were able to do that, and eventually we were able to make her one of these. And so, but other things that you can do, uh, where we ran into uh, issues like that. If you look at the handprint, we've actually got uh, the clay print, you know, where a five-year-old sticks their hand in clay, kind of painting. Take that and we're able to make a handprint out of it. And so there's a lot of little things that you can do that you don't think, think so. that And this possible. is not only good for um, people who have passed away, but new moms, new babies. Uh, because when, in the hospital when your baby's born you always get that hospital gift certificate or certificate with the footprints on it and we can take the footprints off of that and put it on to a charm also. I want to get one like that is like this because I have four kids and have everybody's footprint on it. So you know you can do that and we can do the same thing with your your pets. Uh, footprints and paw prints of your pets we can put on the jewelry too. The last so. question that we really get with jewelry is everybody thinks that it's just for females and the answer is it's not. Everything that you see here there is a male version of it. So but a male's probably not going to wear a pendant but there's pocket knife, tie clips, things like that. They're all options specifically designed for towards the male. Any type of pendant that you see can be turned into a keychain and so that's more along the lines, lines of the male. Now somebody came in with their own pendant or piece of jewelry are you able to somehow or some things you probably could do if they had a charm like this that, that opened up then absolutely we could, we could do something like that but most cremation jewelry is going to have a small opening on it and we take the screw out and then we put a small amount of ash in that and that's, that's why you just can't use any piece of jewelry. But it's not to say that something couldn't be done. We'd always take rings have become popular lately, too. The old widow makers. Interesting story on the widow makers. Or, um, the reason they got the name widow maker is because back in the 16th century, this is how they used to assassinate kings and royalty. <laughs> they'd put poison in it, and then they'd open it up. They'd pour it out. Probably seen it in a couple movies. And... Uh, how got the name Widowmaker. So you would put ashes in there and then seal it? Yes. Yeah. Everything that we do, uh, we're going to put the ashes in it for them and then we will seal it. Ideally, we like it to set for 24 hours, but it, we can do it as quick as an hour. We just ask nobody to wear it or do anything. Um, that way it doesn't shift or anything in the 
resin has a good time to sell. I came here for an education on your store, and um, I hope other people will see this and and not walk past the window two, three times, but just come right in. Um, so one last question, and that's how can we contact you on the web, or how can we get online and see other products that is not in this store? Our website is www.tillwemeetagain.net, and the till is T-I-L, just one L, tillwemeetagain.net, and James and I both have um, email addresses that we can be contacted at. Mine is robin.mccombus at tillwemeetagain.net, and James's is james.mccombus at tillwemeetagain.net. And we'd love to hear from you, or you can give us a call at 620-259-6980. And another way to contact us is via our Facebook pages. We post almost every week something new up there that we've done. Uh, so check us out on Facebook at tillwemeetagain.net.